Ladies and gentlemen, Patty the Batty is back. From his most recent controversies to all of his possible contenders, this is Patty Pimblett's return to the UFC Revealed. Drew Dober's made it very clear he wants a chance to shut Patty up. Dober's ranked number 14th in the lightweight division, but in that division, that's far from a bad spot. The lightweight division is always on fire. Dober's been in the UFC since back in 2014, consistently keeping a high level in the insanely competitive lightweight division. However, 2021 was definitely a hard year for Drew. He was dominated by Islam Makachev. To be fair to Drew, nobody knew what he was getting into with that fight, as Makachev was still on the rise. Now, Makachev's an absolute monster at the top of his game and the division. But that wasn't Dober's only loss that year. Three months later, he lost via unanimous decision against Brad Riddell. All three judges score this contest, 29-28 for the winner by unanimous decision, Brad the Great Riddell! At 33, Drew's career prospects in the UFC started to look a bit bleak. But with a warrior spirit, his story's far from over. The Nebraska-born fighter put on a brave face, and he's looking to change the tides. Dober won three consecutive fights in 2022, and he's slowly working his way back up the rankings. But he'll need to work really hard if he wants to make it happen. And in today's industry, the best way to make that happen is to make sure everyone knows his name. I'm not trying to sneak my way up that ladder. I'm trying to make loud noises, and so I would never turn down an exciting unranked fight for a boring ranked fight. That's probably the reason Drew's taken an interest in Patty, the Batty, Pimblet. Patty's a younger fighter with fewer fights and little experience with strong opponents. But of course, fighting Patty comes with a huge added bonus, a massive amount of valuable attention. Drew says, I think everyone wants to see me punch Patty in the mouth and to test his scouser theory, but it's really all in his field, you know? I'm not above fighting anybody and especially someone as well-liked as this guy. Now, why would it be up to Patty to take the fight if Dober's better ranked? Well, according to Dober, it's simple. Patty has more Instagram followers. That's right, being viral is the name of the game these days, and knocking out Patty's worth more than knocking out somebody in the top 10. To be fair to Patty, though, he's basically undefeated in the UFC. Patty's performances have been pretty impressive. He has a great MMA record at 20 and 3. And the truth is, he stayed at Cage Warriors for a pretty long time. Not because the UFC wouldn't take him, but simply because Cage Warriors had better conditions. He has four wins in the UFC, and he's won fight of the night in no less than three of them. Patty's definitely an exciting fighter but he's also still far from a title shot. He has a lot to prove, and although he's extremely popular, fight fans have definitely lost respect for Patty the Batty in the past few months. Why? Well, it all started with that cringeworthy video of Patty talking to Dana White about journalist Ariel Helwani. But I was just me being honest, you right. know what I mean? He was talking about me saying that, uh, I can't believe fighters and managers have got the audacity to ask me for money. Why wouldn't we? You're a content creator. If I'm Wait, who the f*** are you? <laughs> who the f*** are you? This dude's ego is so f massive and he thinks he's whatever. You know what the great thing is about him? He's completely f disappeared. Patty said, I can't believe fighters and managers have the audacity of asking me for money. Why wouldn't we? You're a content creator. Dana responded saying, wait, who the f*** are you? This dude's ego is so fucking massive. You know what's the greatest thing about him? He's completely fucking disappeared. What were those two thinking? Helwani's arguably one of the most respected people in the game, and that podcast did not go down well in the MMA community, especially for Patty, who had previously advocated for better pay for fighters, but apparently changed his tune when his pockets started filling up and his friendship with Dana developed. I mean, kissing up to your boss is never something that'll make you look good. Somehow, things got even worse for Patty just a few days later. Patty was set to fight Jared Gordon, a man who was thought to be a stepping stone for him, and the betting odds heavily favored Patty. But the fight did not go as planned. 
In three rounds, Gordon achieved over six minutes of ground control time and proved himself much more accurate with his striking. The fight went the full three rounds, and everyone who saw it agreed. Jared Gordon won that fight, with either two or three rounds going his way. But when it came to choosing a winner, the judges had a big surprise in store. Patty won via unanimous decision, and it didn't look good. Patty does a full interview playing friendly with the boss. Then days later, he obviously loses a fight, but the judges somehow give him the win. Many believe the decision had more to do with Patty's internet popularity than his actual fighting. Drew Dober said, I guess my opinion on the entire matter is there's something to star power, you know, in the judges' decisions, and we're watching octagon control and effectiveness and all this other stuff, but I mean, the star power is something you gotta also get over. So when you're fighting a guy as big as Patty, you gotta do more than just five more punches. Since then, Patty's repeatedly denied claims that the result was unfair and says he honestly believes he won. I have to say, it's impressive what this man managed to do in a single week. He went from being everybody's favorite up-and-coming fighter to MMA's public enemy number one. It's not nice, but it's impressive. In any case, Patty really needs a fight. Why? Because fame's a double-edged sword, and all of a sudden, his story has lost nearly all its credibility. Patty needs to knock someone out ASAP, or his meteoric rise will lead to him being forgotten just as quickly. That's exactly what Dober's talking about when he says that everyone wants to see Patty punched in the mouth. But hey, this definitely looks like a good deal for Drew Dober. Of course, we should point out, so far, this fight is all speculation and rumors. Dober even mentioned a possibility of a fight in May. Patty says, Drew Dober said yeah to fighting me on May 6th. I'm getting surgery on the 7th of March. I don't know, you see some mad stuff on the internet. You kind of get on with it. And Dober isn't the only one who's called out Patty. Jamie Malarkey also wants a shot at the baddie. He called him out after his last win, and just like Dober, he might have a shot. Malarkey says there's a high possibility of that fight happening. Of course, now there's a huge market for people who want to take him out, but who does Patty actually want to fight? Well, it seems like he'd be happy giving Jared Gordon another shot, and I can't blame him. In his own words, Patty says, If everyone wants to see it again, I don't mind beating him up at the end of the year, lad. Hopefully he beats Bobby Green, and if he wants to fight towards the back end of the year, I'm game. If you ask me, this is definitely the best option for Patty when he recovers from surgery. A win against Gordon might not guarantee him a good spot on the rankings, and it certainly won't give him a title shot, but it could be the key to regaining something much more important, his credibility. Whatever happens, we'll be happy to see Patty back in the octagon. So there you have it, fight fans. That was Patty Pimblett's return to the UFC Revealed.